Hello everyone, my name is Ilirio and welcome back for another video. Today I want to talk about the new 1.21 update. After a lot of snapshots, this update is finally out and it comes with a lot of changes, especially for the technical community. I'm sure most of you are already aware about the new crafter and the trial chambers. So in this video, I want to mostly talk about the technical changes. Some of them you might know and some of them you probably haven't heard of. The first change is that you need to drink a bottle to get Bad Omen. And even when you drink the bottle, there is a cooldown of 30 seconds before you can drink it again. Meaning now you can stack raids like you used to. It's still possible to do raid farms, but they will be a lot slower. But thankfully, Mojang made that now when you kill a witch, you guarantee to get redstone dust. And you will get between 4 and 8 without looting. If you get looting, you can get up to 11. And I've seen that if you use a single hot witch farm, with looting 3 you can get up to 7000 redstone dust per hour, which is faster than Yannick's so far raid farm, which was around 5000. Meaning that now witch farms are a viable source of redstone. And if you want raids similar as a Kronos raid farm, you can also make a quad witch hut, which will technically yield around 28000 redstone dust. So even if you can't get as fast as the ultimate raid farm for example, you still can get a lot of redstone, which will be enough for most technical servers. The second change is about the end platform. So let me turn on this sand dripper. This is a sand dripper that I shown you a few months ago. And so previously when you had any entity entering the end, the game will remove all the blocks in a 5x5 and 3 high area. Now it works a bit differently because if you have a block in this area, the game will destroy the block and drop it. And so due to how the code works now, you can't use the silly string method to prevent the obsidian platform to regenerate. And so now while the blocks arrive in the end, they will all drop on top of the obsidian platform. But they won't get deleted, they will stay here at entity. Meaning you can still collect them. And I think the easiest way will be to use minecarts. I will turn on the setup so you can see how it looks. Here I have three minecarts that will collect the drops and then they will yeet them in a water stream. This is a concept that has been shown by Inspector Talon and Method, I think, when Y19 came out. And this particular design is by C5. I don't have carpet mode in this version yet to tell if this is fully reliable, but it seems to be, and I think it should be able to handle even the 4032k sand dripper that I built a few months ago. The only issue now is to make a concrete factory, because you can have the concrete powder falling inside of the obsidian platform meaning the concrete factory that I made is not working anymore. And so the solution will be to do it how we used to do previously, which is to give momentum to the concrete powder, so uh, they will fall on the sides. And just so you know, all the liquids will also get deleted on the obsidian platform. And a really good advantage to have the end platform that break blocks is that you can use it as a blast chamber. For example, you can make a really easy cobblestone farm with flowing lava and water. In this case the water gets removed every time and also the cobblestone. And the clock here is not even synchronized but you get the point. You will also need to add a collection system at the bottom with minecarts. Or you can try to make it so the water will also flush the items. And I already saw some people make really fast cobblestone farm using this concept. And another change which is not from 1.21 but from 1.20.5 is that now the end platform will check load itself. So like the another portal, it will checkload a 3x3 area around the portal. And in this case, I'm not exactly sure if it's centered exactly in the middle, I would assume so. So this is the middle chunk, and then it will chunkload this area, which will be entity processing, and also 5x5 of redstone processing chunks. Meaning you can have your concrete factory in the end, and you won't need to load it, because it will be loaded automatically. And this is also the case with the end gateways. So if I send an entity through this gateway, it will lock the other side, also in a 3x3 around the center portal. And this can technically be used to load a mob switch. So you can now have a mob switch in the end without using any bot. You can use two gateways and send items back and forth to load the area. The only thing that breaks is void trading using the gateways. And I personally don't mind, but I know a lot of people will be annoyed by that. Another change from 1.20.5 that I think is worth mentioning in this video is the change of the spawn chunk size. The spawn chunk is an area in the center of your wall which is constantly loaded 
and previously it was a 19 by 19 area of entity processing chunks, and now it's only a 3 by 3. In this world, it's centered on this chunk, meaning all the chunks around it are entity processing. And if you go one chunk above, so in this chunk, this is a redstone processing but not entity processing, meaning this observer clock will still work because it's inside a chunk. But this one will go one block outside of the chunk, meaning it will not work if I unload this area. So let's unload the area and go back here again. I set spectator to not load the chunks, so here only the spawn chunks will be loaded. So that's the 3x3 area I was talking about. And if I go here, I can see that this observer clock is still loading. It's still working, because this is in redstone processing chunks. But this one is not working, the piston is not firing. Because this is outside of the redstone processing chunk. So in short, there are 20 times less entity processing chunks, compared to previous versions. There is a 3x3 of chunks that are entity processing, a 5x5 that are redstone processing, and a 7x7 where the mobs will still count toward the mob cap, but they will not be ticking, which is exactly like nether portal chunk loading works, and also now with the end gateway. I wanted to compare the difference between the old and the new spawn chunk, so I just created a new world in 1.20.2, and I have around a distance of 12. I will TP myself 1000 blocks away and see what the MSPT is like. Now that all the chunks have loaded, we can check the average MSPT on the bottom right, and we can see we are around 6 MSPT, with a minimum of 5. So now let's update to 1.21 and let's see what we have. I have loaded the same world and I'm in the exact same position and now the MSPT is 4, with a minimum of 3. So this is a reduction of 33%, which is decent especially considering I have a good CPU. So this is definitely a welcome change, especially for people that don't have a really good PC. And Mojang made a lot of changes with Portal in this update, because now a lot of entities that couldn't go through nether portals are now able to go through. For example, sand and veils and concrete powder used to just fall through the portal, but now they can go inside of the nether. So they will get teleported. So I just added a platform in the nether, and if I go in the overworld and launch the sand, it will appear in the nether. We can also try with an anvil, and it will do the same. Another entity that now works with nether portals is enderpearls, because now you can use enderpearl to teleport in another dimension. And now we can make an enderpearl stasis chamber in the overworld that will send the pearl in the nether. It was previously possible to make an enderpearl stasis chamber in the nether, but it was a lot more complicated than in the overworld. Another change is that now you can send TNT through nether portal, and this TNT will not destroy the portal blocks. So as you can see, it destroyed the sand on the side, but it didn't destroy the portal. And this can actually be useful to make faster 2 dimension farm using only one player. Because usually when you have a 2 dimension farm, you either have 2 player, one that will AFK on one dimension, and the other one that will kill the mobs in the other dimension. Or you can use one player, like I did in my wither skeleton farm, where I send the wither skeleton in the overworld to quickly remove them from the mob cap, and then back in the nether. But now you could for example send the wither skeleton to the overworld and have the bot placing TNT in the nether and send the TNT in the overworld to kill the wither skeleton. It means that you could use portals to quickly remove mobs from the mob cap, but you would only need one player to run the farm. So now we can pretty much send any entity through another portal and they will load the area on the other side. And they will even generate a portal if there isn't any. One last change with nether portals is that now vehicles with their passengers can go through nether portals. Because previously that wasn't the case. So we can see, I was able to go through the nether portal with the pig and the boat. And it also works with the horse, and it also works if you have a strider with another strider on top of it. And this change is nice for normal gameplay, especially if you like traveling with a horse. It will also fix some farms, like a strider farm that uses portals, but it will break all the farms that uses bots to get the mobs out of the portal. This farm will still work, but there will be mobs stuck inside of the portals. One last thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like you can change dimension really fast now, because it feels pretty much instant. And I don't have any mods. 
The next change I wanted to talk about is more of an addition to the game. We have four new potions, which are Wind Charging, Weaving, Oozing and Infestation. And the second and third one are the most interesting one. When you use a potion of Weaving on a mob, and if you kill it, it will spread cobwebs. And this is the first kind of renewable way to get cobwebs. But this is not entirely renewable, because you still need to make the potions and you need one cobweb to make three potions, but to make the potions you also need nether wards and blaze powder. But then you still have to share the cobwebs. So maybe it's possible to make a farm that's almost fully automatic, but it will require a lot of work. I still think this is a nice addition and this could be a cool farm project. The second interesting potion is the potion of oozing. So if you splash a mob with this potion and then you kill it, this time you will spawn some slimes. And I think you always get two slimes, I'm not sure about the size. But it seems to be that these are always medium slimes. And again, I think this might be possible to make a farm using this mechanic. And it will be a bit simpler than the cobwebs because you don't have to mine the slime, you can just kill them automatically. In the future, I might look into making some kind of farm using one of these two mechanics. Especially the cobweb farm, because it's already easy to make a slime farm. The last potion has a 5% chance of spawning a silverfish if you kill a mop. But I don't think it's really useful, because silverfish don't drop anything, except XP. This next change is a bit more niche, and I'm talking about the removal of overstacked signal strength. Previously it was possible to stack two Curse of Binding books into a grindstone to have a stack of two instackables, and then it was possible to stack these books into 64. Now if I try to stack two books in the grindstone, it doesn't work. So it's not possible to stack unstackables anymore. And this was used to get signal strength above 15, up to 897. I personally used this to count how many items I had in a storage and to display this number. And it's still possible to make a counter for a storage, but it's a bit more complicated than just using overstack signal strength. The last change I have for this video is a change to end crystals, because now they are immune to fire damage. And it doesn't break a lot of things actually. It's just that previously you were able to make headless piston using this setup and it didn't have a lot of practical uses, except maybe for making floating snow. But now since end crystals are immune to fire, if I use the same setup, nothing happens. That will be it for the video. If you think there is an important change that I forgot to mention, please let me know in the comments. As I said, I only focused on the small technical changes and not on the bigger one. Overall, I think 1.21 is a good update even if we break some things, it brings a lot of new things for technical players and also for regular players. And I think it's a good thing to change the meta sometimes and not always play the same way. So thank you everyone for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!